Hello and welcome to another Explorer gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at my Sultai Delirium build, which is a deck I've been working on for quite some time, even before we got the battles on Arena, and I thought I would wait until after we got March of the Machine to see if I could add an extra card type to the deck, which is of course very helpful when you're playing a Delirium strategy, which is trying to get as many card types in the graveyard as possible to enable cards like Traverse the Ulvenwald, Grimflare, and eventually Emrakul, the Promised End, which is a very fun one-off to search up with your traverse once it's enabled, but it turns out that we didn't get any useful battles to add to the deck, so I'm kind of back to square one here, and this is the build I was working with before March of the Machine, and it's a pretty interesting combination of uh, card types and synergies. One of the packages that we're running is See the Truth alongside Founding the Third Path, and alongside Arcane Proxy, and all these also add a lot of card types, Arcane Proxy being an artifact creature, Founding being an enchantment that can mill us, so you can see where these synergies are headed. See the truth, a two-mana sorcery lets us look at the top three cards of our library, putting one of those into our hand and the rest on the bottom, and if this was cast from anywhere other than our hand, we can put all three cards in our hand instead, so then it becomes a two-mana draw three, and there's a few ways to enable it. Of course, Arcane Proxy is the easiest one, cast your two-mana seed the truth, turn 3 cast Arcane Proxy. When it enters, we can exile an instant or sorcery with mana value less than or equal to the proxy's power from our graveyard, copy it, and cast it without paying its mana cost. So now we get to draw 3 with our See the Truth, so that's an awesome way to refuel. And then there's Founding, which is a read ahead saga, so we can start from any chapter we'd like. The first one lets us cast an instant or sorcery with mana value 1 or 2 from our hand without paying its mana cost. Can be a nice way to maybe cast a Gopher to Throat or some other removal spell. It does not let us draw. 3 with See the Truth, since we're still casting it from our hand, but it can also be a way to cast it for free. Then on chapter 2, target player mills 4 cards, that can help fill the graveyard to enable Delirium. And then finally, exile an instant or sorcery card from our graveyard, copy it, and we may cast the copy. So once again, if we exile See the Truth and pay the 2 mana, we get to draw 3 cards with it. So in the late game, if we have a lot of mana available and top deck founding, we can skip to chapter 3 right away, if we have a See the Truth in the graveyard, and then it's 4 mana draw 3, so that's still pretty flexible. And then some of the other payoffs in the deck, of course, include Grim Flayer, a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two creature with Trample, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, we get to surveil 3. So we get to put a bunch of cards into our graveyard, or maybe keep some powerful cards on top of the deck to draw on the following turn. And if we have Delirium enabled, meaning four or more different card types in our graveyard, then it gets plus two plus two. So then it turns into a two mana four four trampler that can easily enable its own ability by connecting. So having four card types is not too difficult. Land can get there pretty easily with cards like Fabled Passage, or we can mill it between Grim Flare and Founding. Then we have plenty of sorceries with See the Truth at one mana. There's Thought Seize, as of course your classic one mana interaction in the format to take away a card from the opponent's hand. We've got Traverse the Ulvenwald as another sorcery, we can first use it to search up a basic land and put it into our hand, so that's why we have two islands, two swamps and a forest to get with either Traverse the Ulvenwald or with Fabled Passage. And then later in the game, once we have Delirium enabled, we can traverse for any land or any creature, so we can now also get our non-basic lands, like maybe a Fabled Passage if we just want to hit our land drops, but we can also get one of our creatures, which includes our Grim Flare, our Cane Proxy, or we can get our one-off Emrakul, the Promised End, which gets a 1-mana discount for each card type in our graveyard. And then when we cast the 1313, we get to gain control of target opponent during that player's next turn, and after that turn, they get an extra turn as well. And then flying, trample, and protection from instance. So Emrakul can lead to some very fun moments where you get to mess up the opponent's turn, basically, and try and do as much damage as possible. So that's always a fun mini game to play. And uh, of course, Emrakul can go down to potentially even six mana in this deck, since we have instant, we have sorcery, enchantment, creature, Planeswalker, Artifact, and then Land. So that's potentially uh, seven card types to add to the graveyard. So Battles sadly didn't make it into the deck, otherwise we could have gotten it down to five. There's even Tribal on Arena, but not Legal and Explorer, which could get it down to four mana. So that's the cheapest you can cast Emrakul with its own ability. And then we've got a few Planeswalkers, as we mentioned. Liliana the Last Hope can also potentially mill additional cards with a minus two to fill the graveyard for Delirium, getting back a creature. So if we happen to mill an Emrakul with our Founding or with a Grim Flare, we can still get it back with the Last Hope. And then it can also get back our Grim Flare or Arcane Proxy. Then the plus one will shrink down an opposing creature, giving it minus two, minus one until our next turn. So that also persists through the opponent's next turn and is great for taking out one toughness creatures like the various elves in the format. 
and then a minus 7 ultimate gives us an emblem which is also quite achievable which will slowly build up an army of zombie tokens to overwhelm the opponent. Then we've got a Lilian of the Veil, which can a plus one to make each player discard, can also be a way of filling the graveyard for Delirium, and then a minus two makes the opponent sacrifice a creature, so it can be a nice answer to larger creatures, thinking of Graveyard Trespasser, something we don't want to target with spot removal, that we can cleanly take care of with a Lilian of the Veil, and then a minus six can also be pretty fun if we get to it. And then we've got a bit more spot removal with Go for the Throat, can be a nice instant speed answer to Grease Fang, which can be a problematic creature, which can sometimes survive a fatal push if we can't enable Revolt at instant speed, but we can do so thanks to Fabled Passage in this deck, so that's pretty useful. And then at sorcery speed we can maybe enable Revolt with our Founding if it goes to the last chapter and we sacrifice it. So even if we play Founding and start from chapter 3, we can actually get back Fatal Push and it will have Revolt enabled, so that's another subtle synergy that's pretty sweet. And uh, yeah, there's uh, not much else to say. Arcane Proxy we can also cast for 7 mana, although it doesn't come up very often, but usually just happy to cast it for 3 mana, getting back some of our interaction, later maybe getting back a Traverse to find our Emrakul, cool, or getting back See the Truth to draw 3 cards. And then a mana base has a few fast lines here to play early with Blooming Marsh, Sanctum, and our uh, Dark Slick Shores, and then plenty of basics to find with Fabled Passage and Traverse, and a couple uh, Shock lines as well, so we have more untapped lands available. Shipwreck Marsh also makes sense since we need double blue and double black on turn 3, so this entering untapped starting turn 3 is also totally fine. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. This portion of the video is brought to you by Cook and & Becker and their officially licensed Magic the Gathering art print collection. Their pieces include Kiora the Crashing Wave by Scott Fisher, Nissa of Shadowed Bows by Dave Raposa, Buzzery Cat by Toshiaki Takayama, Kalia of the Vast by Scott Fisher, and Bitter Blossom by Rebecca Gay. There will be two variants available for each one, the standard digital print and the deluxe screen print, which can come in different sizes. Each print will also come with a certificate of authenticity, and I love what they've done with the mana symbols on those. Every order of a premium print has a 1 in 10 chance of receiving an exclusive not-for-sale print of Black Lotus by Christopher Rush. This is a limited edition print run, so get yours while they're still available, and check out their website using the link in the video description, and any purchases will help support the channel, so that's always very much appreciated. And now back to the gameplay. Okay, we're on the play with a decent hand. Can go ahead and play a tapped Watery Grave. Turn to Blooming Marsh. Plays Grim Flare. And then Founding can cast or see the truth. But probably want to get some pressure going first. Liliana's not bad. Opponent under Red White. Could be a Pia Exile deck. Could be Heroic. Wily Goblin. Maybe a Red Devotion. So Liliana killing Goblin's not bad. And a Cacophony Scamp. I guess it could be Goblin Tribal as well. So don't mind taking out the Scamp with Liliana. Also means it doesn't deal any damage because it doesn't have any power. This is my home, and I don't appreciate it when people touch my things. I'm not finished with you yet. And then I want to start enabling Grim Flare, so we'll attack. And uh, yeah, I think everything goes to the graveyard here. So we add creature as a type, even though another Grim Flare would be decent. Can enable revolts by going to chapter 3 with founding if necessary. Although no instant or sorcery to get back. Warchief, okay. What's the plan here? Can start by founding, casting, see the truth for free. Liliana can plus some Wily Goblin and then take it from there. Could also set up the top of my deck with Grim Flare first in case I find a go for the throat. And then Graham go for the throat. Okay, so plus some Wily Goblin, kill War Chief. And then now I can attack. Although, could potentially lose Liliana to another Warchief. So that's a reason to hang back here. 
Yeah, maybe I should uh, protect Liliana. It's gonna be a Horde Master next. Times two, so it doesn't die to Liliana. But Fatal Push will uh, definitely help mill ourselves to try and enable an Amrakul at some point, I guess. So let us Fatal Push Horde Master. And plus Liliana. All in a day's work. They did find two goblins, that's pretty good. Let's see the truth. Can still maybe thought seize. See what they're working with. Rally the ancestors, that's what the white is for. Nice. Yeah, let's definitely take that. And hit for four. I'm looking for an Emra cool now. Arcane Proxy is great too, and Traverse can find Emrakul. So add Planeswalker to the graveyard. And then I guess next turn I get to draw a bunch of cards with another See the Truth. So yeah, this seems fine. Do we need Artifact as an extra type? I guess we don't have it yet. Alright, fine, let's just maximize our Emrakul as much as possible. We've got seven types, which means Emrakul costs six mana. So I'll be one short of uh, casting it with my current mana base. But we wanted to draw three here anyways. Can draw three. And what's next? Kill a goblin. Get Emrakul. Mm, and then we want to try to set a land on top of our deck with Grimflare. So we can cast it next turn. Okay, that works. And then I'll just pass a turn with Gopher to throw it available. There is a Prospector on top of the deck, which they can immediately use here. So keeping a go for the throat in case the unknown card is another rally could be important, but it's just a scamp. So Prospector in play is actually going to be pretty fun with Emrakul if the opponent doesn't sacrifice it in response. Fable of the Mirror Breakers next. Go for the throat would potentially remove a haste creature like Warchief from giving the team haste. And I guess we'll uh, take out one Snoop for now. And then six mana Emrakul coming up. This is exciting. Does our opponent remember to sack their own Prospector? They're definitely looking at it, so they are aware, I think. Plus on the scamp. They're gonna sack it to the prospector to deal one damage on the way out. Don't think we attack with a Grim Flare. Just pass a turn. And our opponent's gonna sack prospector to itself. Alright. Don't get to quite have as much fun as I would have liked. But uh, yeah, can attack with two of their creatures and kill them and then not gonna cast the opponent's fable they are drawing then for the turn so then they should be dead to Amarakul okay and that does it awesome on to the next one Okay, we're on the draw, facing a Kahira deck, so it could be control. Our hand is not amazing, but certainly keepable. Might take us a while to cast an Emrakul. Let's check things out with the Thoughtsies. Okay, Solemnity is interesting. 
And then Farewell is particularly painful against our deck if it clears graveyards. Although it is still pretty far away at 6 mana. So I can take the Search for Ascanta, which can help the opponent find cheaper answers. And then trying to make a bit of progress with Grim Flare in the meantime. Solemnity could be part of a combo with 9 lives, which we're not going to have an easy time answering, although we do have the uh, potential of casting an Emmer Cool to mess things up. So I think we take the Ascanta. And then we can go for Grim Flare here. Solemnity is fine. So let's attack. And try to find more hand disruption. Arcane proxy, see the truth. Okay, so we'll keep the proxy on top. And then we can draw three with it next turn. And hope their opponent doesn't have a supreme verdict pretty much. They could feel the ruin to make me shuffle. Although I expect them to cast Deluge instead. Okay, step one, I guess, attack and see what's up. Get to mill more cards. And I think everything is going to the graveyard here. Delirium is active. And yet again, everything in Graveyard. So I can cast Arcane Proxy. And then maybe still draw into a Thought Seize that we can cast. If not, play a Tapped Sanctum. Could also just get back Thought Seize right now, but I think drawing three is still the preferred play. And then hope to find another Proxy or Thought Seize along the way. Okay, there's a Proxy, so that can try to go for Thought Seize next turn before opponent gets a chance to farewell. And there's a Deluge. If our opponent still has farewell in hand by the time we cast Emrakul, that would actually be useful, because then we can make them exile their own enchantments. Narset prevents card draw from Arcane Proxy. And our opponent's going to march Grim Flayer right now. And a Traverse is a draw. So we certainly have options. Probably want to deal with Narset. Although I could also just deal 2 damage to Narset with Arcane Proxy. So Grim Flayer can keep milling and potentially can uh, help enable Emrakul some more. Because 9 mana is a little bit expensive here. And then proxy get back Thoughtseize to probably hit the Farewell. Could also start there, just to have more information to work with. And then Traverse could also be cast while we still have Delirium enabled. Alright, so our opponent does have 9 lives, Redundant Solemnity and a Farewell. Our opponent doesn't have a second white source. They can use Field of Ruin to get a second white source, but then they won't be able to farewell that turn. So I think we take nine lives. Hope our opponent doesn't draw the white source. And then hope to cast an Emrakul next turn. And then for now, this goes after Narset, this goes face. And Fatal Push is an instance. Grim Flare number three I probably don't need right now. So still nine mana Emrakul. So let's traverse and find another Arcane Proxy is probably the best I can do. This is a matchup where I wish I had a Boseju to search up with uh, Traverse the Olvenwald. But that's certainly a card I would consider having in the sideboard as something to tutor up, but also just a nice land to have. Opponent found a land, but it's tapped and it's not a white source, so opponent just replays Solemnity. 
Okay, so they've got one card left in hand, so which I can make them discard with Liliana. And uh, we can keep going face. So that sounds like a plan. Arcane Proxy doesn't have anything exciting to get back right now. But Grim Flare could maybe mill a Thoughtseize that I can still cast as well. So I'll finish off Narsets. And then the rest can go face. And yeah, let's mill the Planeswalker here and everything else. So we've got 8 mana Emrakul. So we should have another island left I can fetch up with a Fabled Passage here. So I can cast the Arcane Proxy, get back another See the Truth to draw 3. And then next turn I have the option of maybe minusing Liliana on myself just to put an artifact in the graveyard to maybe enable Emrakul, but we'll see. Alright, and our opponent explodes. Awesome, managed to outgrind some blue-white Solemnity 9 lives onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a potentially very good hand if Thoughtseize can take answers for Grimflare and we find a second black source for our Lilianas, which can also maybe get Grimflare back. Turn 1 Duress. So that can take either Thoughtseize or one of our Planeswalkers, probably takes Thoughtseize. And uh, yeah, I can show them the Overgrown Tomb, just so we don't have to take damage from it. So we've got a Grim Flare into either Liliana. And now Arcane Proxy could be a very nice play to get back Thoughtseize. Bone does seem to have removal. Okay, so blue-black control. Could be a rogues deck. Go blank. Okay, that's pretty painful against our deck. Um, discard and exile our graveyard. So forest can certainly go. And then I have to decide what else. Arcane proxy is not the best when we don't have a thought cease to get back with it. So maybe that just goes and keep our two planeswalkers. Find another Liliana of the Veil. So I'll play a Liliana of the Veil and plus. Discarding another Liliana of the Veil, I think. When I... You're me what... <laughs> and keep our last hope. Rather... Another go blank, discard it. Edict deals with our Planeswalker, yeah. A relatively recent addition in the format. Pretty good here. But we still have our last hope. And then I guess I'll shock myself to play around a sensor or what have you. And I'm just gonna start plussing. Not gonna try to randomly mill a creature since we don't have many. And the ultimate is potentially a win condition here. Opponent's got an R set, that's pretty good. They'll be able to activate it twice. Fatal Push doesn't deal with our Planeswalker, at least. So we'll see if they can find another answer in time, another Edict I'm would do it. Keep an open mind. They found a Negate. Okay. I don't think I want to Traverse for a Basic. Your day is mine. Can at least wait until we have Delirium enabled to get it negated. Opponent passes, plus again, and next turn I'm looking forward to an ultimate, which says we get an emblem, beginning of our end step, create zombies, oh no, opponent found an Ashok off the top that can bounce Liliana here. Opponent actually plussing, does Ashok not minus 3 on our Liliana? It does, so that seems baffling to me. Can deal with the token. I guess her opponent's working up towards their own ultimate. You to so we can make an army of zombies. Still not gonna traverse. They can push one of the tokens here. Go for the throw deals with another nightmare.
but the zombies are gonna keep multiplying. So they should be able to overpower Ashok at some point. Vraska, Betrayal Sting, that can proliferate and uh, help the opponent minus Narset again and reach ultimate with Ashok. So we've got some work to do here. It is actually possible that this emblem's not good enough. Bloomy Marsh is a draw. So opponent did not minus two Narset last turn. Can we beat a minus seven? I mean, even if we attack Ashok, our opponent will still be able to add loyalty with Vraska and then still uh, minus seven. And in exile, We've got Grimflare, Thoughtseize, Arcane Proxy, so that's where the Go Blank, I guess, will also come in handy. So I guess we'll finish off Narset, at least deal with one of the Planeswalkers. And then keep Blooming Marsh in hand as something I can get rid of if they decide to minus Ashok. So we've got four zombies now. It's been a while since I've seen a Last Hope emblem. And our opponent's going to ultimate Ashok. Can be a 7 mana arcane proxy. Thought C stakes or traverse. And uh, what are they getting back here? A removal spell. So they did produce a bunch of blockers, but it definitely could have been worse. So they've got two unknown cards in hand, and there's an Emrakul, which I'm not really close to casting here. So I can basically give up on my zombies to try and attack Ashiok. If our opponent has a spot removal spell, I may regret it, because then I'm not making as many zombie tokens end of turn. But getting an Ashiok off the board is pretty big. And at least I would still trade for Grimflare here. So I'll give it a shot. Alright, so no removal, I shook down. And I'll play it at Blooming Marsh in case we end up casting our Emrakul. If our opponent's playing Sweepers, we could still fall behind. Shield Root's also a good one. Vraska could be deadly if they have another one in hand if they use a minus 9 ultimate. So we probably have to go after Vraska here with the whole squad. And then we'll get a fresh batch of zombies to play defense as well. There are technically cards that could surgically remove all the zombies, but don't expect the opponent to play those in their main deck. Another Narset. Can they find a Sweeper? Shark Typhoon, not quite. They pass a turn, and uh, yeah, we're getting closer and closer to this Emrakul, which would be a lot of fun. So we should try and take out some of their Planeswalkers here, I suppose, as opposed to going face. I think I'll go 5 and 5. They may be able to save Raska with Shark Typhoon into a removal spell, but Narset's also pretty scary when they can keep digging for sweepers. Opponent just makes the largest shark possible, which does enable Delirium, so Grimflare is now a 4-4. And they're going to keep Narset alive, but unable to minus 2. And then Shieldred draining us and the shark attacking us could potentially end things. But we will get quite a few more zombies. Uh, 
No more card draw engines for the opponents. Another Vraxka, yeah. So they can proliferate and then minus two Narset again. I'm two mana away from an Emrakul. So it seems unlikely to happen here. Bowen found another Ashiok. Which is likely just making a 2 3. At least our opponent's tapped out. We fall to 9 and then 7. And go for the throw to draw. So that can clear Shield Root. Although the 2 damage has been dealt. So we can kill Shield Root, have 14 attackers to 3 blockers. So 11 zombies equals 22 damage going through. Which is not quite lethal. But I guess we clear Shield Root and then finish off some of the Planeswalkers still. And then next turn we can try to go for lethal. So six necessary to kill Shieldred. Seven to finish off Vraska. And for opponents, good another Shieldred were dead to the shark and uh, Shieldred draining us. But next turn we'll definitely have enough zombies. And it does look like another Shieldred's incoming. No, we get to untap. Thought sees I'm not gonna cast. So yeah, send the team sideways and uh, we'll see what happens. Fatal push, that's fine. Got 10 more of those. Edict, deal with the token. Wow, what a close game. Possible I should have just dealt with the shark last turn. Might have been slightly safer, but yeah, got to see the power of a Liliana emblem onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we're missing green mana for Grimflayer, but uh, yeah, how bad can it be? We've got Fatal Push and Thoughtseize, and then turn 3 Liliana if we draw any land. Turn 1 Planes into a Recruitment Officer, so Mono White Aggro. So yeah, I think we hit them with the Thoughtseize. Since next turn I may not be able to cast both one drops if our opponent plays a Thalia. Okay, opponent's got ossification as removal, good to know about. So I think we just grab the uh, Copper Code Vanguard here. And then we can try to make them discard ossification with Liliana before we ever commit a creature. And then if they exile Liliana with ossification, we've got another one. So there's the initiates. Take two from Officer, then we get to pass a turn with Fatal Push up to maybe kill the Mutavolt if that attacks. Go for the Throat could also be a decent answer here. This could answer an Adlon, whereas Fatal Push we need to enable her Vault first. But I might just want to use the two mana removal spell, so we keep the cheaper Fatal Push for later. So our opponent did not animate Mutavolt yet, but they could still do so. So they can probably respond by animating Mutavolt if I kill the Officer. Officer can provide them with more cards. Yeah, I think I'll go for the Throat on the Officer now. And then they could still decide to animate Mutavolt, hit me for 4 and train. And that's fine. If I don't use the removal, then they go to attackers and they get to train the initiate anyways. If 
find another go for the throat, so I'm just gonna have to pass it back here. Hoping for a third land to unlock the rest of my hand. Okay, Brutal Cathar, just to get a creature in play. So no mute of all attack this turn. And I have to decide if I want to take out Initiate or not. Opponent could still sack mute of all to a Liliana Minus if we draw land. So they can keep Brutal Cathar alive if they'd like. But, um... Uh, yeah, let's just go for the throw to initiate still, to be more mana efficient. And then really hope for land here. Awesome. So I think step one, Liliana minus. And then they'll likely finish off Liliana with the Mutavolts. But if I Liliana plus, they can also still take it out, so might as well get our creature out of the way. And then we don't want to commit Grimflare until after we've emptied the opponent's hand. So now Fatal Push will be a nice, efficient answer to Mutavolts. So I'm not hitting my spot. I'd be surprised if they used Ossification on Liliana. But it is possible if they just want to push more damage. Alright, opponent does go for the Ossification here. So maybe they picked up another creature they want to play. No, Mutavolt's still attacking. I think we're happy with that outcome. Could see the truth just to hit our land drop for a turn. We've got instant and sorcery in graveyard, so won't have the uh, four card types for Delirium yet. Liliana plus does sound pretty reasonable. And get the opponent's last card in case it was something good. And Liliana doesn't die to the Mutavolt's. And then see the truth could go. Keep the Grim Flares. Opponent did have an Adlin in hand, so pretty happy with that outcome. Hopeful initiates, that's okay. And Mutavolt can hit Liliana now, presumably. But now we can protect it with our Grim Flare. Nope, Mutavolt still going face. Arcane Proxy was a great draw as well, so that can get back See the Truth. And I should probably start there to see what else I pick up before deciding how to proceed, but likely just gonna minus Liliana. Should be able to find a land for Fatal Push at least. We did not. Okay. So... Minus a Liliana. Opponent can decide what to keep between Mutavolt and Initiate, but they both trade for Proxy still. Off you go. Which I wouldn't be upset if it went to the Graveyard, because that's would be Creature and Artifact for Grimflare. Okay, Bodyguard to make Mutavolt indestructible, that's still fine. And Mutavolt attacks. Very happy to throw Proxy under the bus. Okay, at long last we can deploy Grimflare. So we have four card types. Could keep plussing Liliana since we have a ton of cards in hand. Maybe ditch a Last Hope to add Planeswalker. And then uh, Last Hope could also potentially get back Arcane Proxy at some point, or mill additional card types. Probably a little soon to traverse for Emrakul, but it's kind of in the back of my mind as an option. Could also traverse for a green source. Now that we can get non-basics, could even get a Fabled Passage. But uh, I think I'll just play this tapped and keep a Fatal Push. Vanguard's fine. So I wouldn't be able to push Mutavolt, but can just push the Vanguard. And Grimflare is still big enough. So this is where we can turn the corner very quickly and our opponent concedes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand is a little awkward. No instant or sorcery to go with Founding and nothing to go with Proxy either. 
So, yeah, also missing double blue. Seems like a mulligan. This is better. Got the Thought Seize for interaction. Proxy to get it back. Traverse can get a basic. So, might be better than keeping an extra land. Uh, could ditch Fabled Passage. And then later Proxy could get back Traverse to maybe get an Emrakul or a Grimflare. Wouldn't be able to turn one Thought Seize either way. So now I could Traverse for a Swamp. So we have double black. Opponent's red-white, heroic. Turn on hoplites, there's a fatal push. Alright, so we'll traverse for swamp. And then next turn I can either thought seize or push. Probably wanna check if the coast is clear, make sure they don't have a hexproof trick or a god's willing. And then proxy can potentially get back a removal spell as well. Alright, opponent's moving all in, so probably just gonna push now. Could also try to snipe their only other creature in hand and then kill the hoplite. Or we can just push now and then next turn proxy get back push and hope they don't have a protection spell left. Seems reasonable. Don't want them to untap and have a protection spell available. One's got a feather. All right, that one I cannot fatal push, so that's a problem. So I guess now we thought seize. I guess the fact their opponent wasn't playing Gigantha was maybe a giveaway that they were playing feather. They had another one in hand and a legionnaire. So yeah, I guess we grab legionnaire to mitigate the damage. And then for now, our opponent will get to loop back some of their pump spells. Home set courage. And a titan strength. All right, that's a lot of damage here. Need to find a go for the throat or a Liliana of the veil. Opponent gets back both pump spells even though one got uh, Exalt with flashback still goes back with feather, so that's a pretty neat interaction. So, founding can go to the final chapter, and then it enables revolt, and I get to cast a fatal push. But of course, there's still another feather to worry about, but that's the only thing that keeps me alive right now. So, gotta go for it. Opponent can Titan Strength in response just to scry. Revolt has been enabled. And then hope to find another removal spell here. Opponent with two creatures. Traverse only gets a land. So yeah, we should be just dead. If I proxy back Thought Seize to take the Titan Strength, I'm at four and then they just homestead Courage on Feather and we're dead. Just double checking here. Yeah, that seems to be the case. So I guess we'll go for it. And then we can keep up two mana, represent a removal spell, but I'm sure opponent's gonna go for it here. Courage on Hoplite first, that we can chump. So yeah, I guess we're technically not dead on board, but now a God's Willing will ramp it up, name blue. Yeah, close one here against the Heroic deck. Feather dodging Fatal Push was definitely relevant this game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Missing green mana, but see the truth can likely find it. 
and in the meantime we can interact with a go for the throat. So it's far from perfect, but probably not bad enough to mulligan. Facing turn one planes. Now we can cast Founding and a free See the Truth. And a Jada, so Angels. Fatal Push, an answer. So we can go Founding, cast free Fatal Push. Although I still want to hit my land drop. But I guess next turn I can see the truth, try and find a green source, and then it'll be in the graveyard for chapter 3. And keep go for the throw to maybe answer some 3 mana angels. Opponents running Faceless Haven, so possible they're playing the book combo to avoid losing the game. Although Emrakul's may be a way around it. So we'll mill ourselves. Could go for the Throat Valkyrie, but I think I want to see the truth in the graveyard. I guess there's another one, so that could also work. Just deal with Valkyrie and pass. At least Delirium has been enabled. And then next turn, I can cast See the Truth, draw three, I'll likely find green mana, and then I can still Grim Flare afterwards. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. So let's just deal with Valkyrie now. Don't want them untapping and casting company. If we wait on killing Valkyrie for some reason. Because then they could respond with company and gain a ton of life. Can also enable revolt next turn with her enchantment going to the graveyard. Speaker of the heavens, we don't mind. And there's a fatal push anyway. Put on maybe holding back their better angels to avoid losing it to a go for the throat getting replayed. Awesome. Orlando sadly come into play tapped here. And then I don't have to discard to hand size, so I'm good to just pass it. Not sure yet if I'm pushing the Speaker of the Heavens. Well, we can block it with a Grim Flare potentially. Resplendent Angel. Okay, that's definitely a target for Go for the Throat. Yeah, the Speaker, I think we keep around for now. Liliana. Okay, now I'm kind of regretting it. Since we could have minused to deal with the Resplendent Angel. Could still do that now. Probably want to traverse for a land. Could also get Fabled Passage to enable Revolt and then we can push the Angel. And then maybe start plussing Liliana to empty their hands. Could also be a reasonable line. And then the next traverse can potentially go for Emrakul. Want to get an extra green source. The only problem with um, Liliana plussing is it could die to the Faceless Haven. So maybe I should get Grim Flare down. And then next turn we'll work on uh, Liliana perhaps. Would love to find a Thought Seize just to see what they're working with. Chaos Reconstruction for two. Could be scary. Find Apparition and Jada. Yeah, that's a good hit. So now Speaker gets to attack anyway. Traverse. Have five card types in Graveyard. Kind of want to see the truth and then try and hit a Thought Seize. No Thought Seize, but another Founding. That way I get to go for the Throat for free. Or I could cast a free See the Truth. Although then I need a land for Go for the Throat. Either way, I think it's Founding, since that'll also help with the Emrakul plan. Unless we happen to mill it. And then I might want to traverse to just get another land here to keep hitting our land drops. Arcane Proxy, get back Founding also, potentially an option. I guess I didn't check if I had a Thought Seizing Graveyard. I did not. So, just get a land. Fabled Passage to thin out the deck, perhaps. Let's 
So, yeah, go for a free See the Truth and leave Jada in play for a turn. Might be alright. And found a failed push anyway. So, can push whatever I want. Jada might still be the scariest. Pushing Apparition only gives me a 2-2, two -two, which is enough to block Speaker, but her opponent's only a 22, so it's not active yet. So, yeah, let's kill Jada again, do it now in case our opponent's got a company in hand. So did not find a Thought Seize that I was hoping for. Another Reconstruction or Company could be devastating. And yeah, there's a Company. So there's no Artifact in Graveyard yet. Otherwise we've got all the types covered. I guess Creature's missing too. Opponent found Overseer and Bishop, so now Speaker's active. Yeah, that's not great for us. Found a push. Mill 4. Alright, now Traverse is looking a lot better. So with 7 types, Amarok will cost 6 mana, so I'm 1 short of casting it here. But that's still going to be the play. Could also, I guess, get an Arcane Proxy and then cast Arcane Proxy, get back Traverse. Which can then get Emrakul, if I'm not planning to use my mana elsewhere this turn. We have to deal with Speaker of the Heavens. And that's the main threat. Liliana could plus, but at this point our opponent probably has a blank in hand that they don't mind discarding. So yeah, I guess Arcane Proxy for Traverse is still slightly better. Even though drawing three cards is tempting. Get Emrakul. So next turn we can cast it. And then for now push on Speaker. Which yeah, ended up uh, being pretty relevant this game. Not pushing it earlier, maybe coming back to bite me a little bit. So we're at 16. Don't think we're necessarily dead at this turn. Just gotta hope Emrakul can put in some work. Can cast a card like Company and then not select anything. Same with Chaos Reconstruction. So it could certainly do some damage. A Resplendent Angel gains 4. Not enough to make a token at least. Take 6 or a 10. Alright, don't have much of a choice. Not gonna cast anything here. Alright, no attack. Take the opponent's next turn. And they had Overseer, Apparition, Angel in hand. <laughs> and that's enough for a concession. Alright, I don't know how this turn would have ended. I guess we can go to the battlefield to figure it out. But it would have been pretty interesting. There weren't any companies or reconstructions in hand. Uh, Apparition says non-token permanent you don't control, so I couldn't exile their own cards with it, unfortunately. So the play might have been to just send Resplendent Angel into Emrakul. Proxy can trade for Skyclave, I guess. And then, yeah, there's not too much I can really mess up that's in their hand. Um, could also animate Faceless Haven and trade it for an Emrakul, essentially. But probably better to take out Resplendent. So, yeah, seems like a premature concession from my viewpoint. If Apparition did actually exile their own permanence, it would have been pretty good. But that's not the case. So, yeah, still would have been kind of an interesting game going forward. But, uh, yeah, Emrakul, definitely a good card here. Alright, so we got to see the Sultai Delirium deck in action. And as you could see, it's a ton of fun, lots of decisions, all the way from early interaction to what to do with your traverses, what to get back with your arcane proxy, sequencing your founding the third path, managing planeswalkers. So there's a ton going on, even the Grim Flare gives you a ton of options. So this is the type of deck I usually enjoy playing, decks with lots of decisions, lots of interaction, but uh, also have to be realistic, it's not one of those fine-tuned tier 1 meta decks, so you're gonna probably have an uphill battle facing those more fine-tuned machines, but in best of three this deck could pick up some useful tools in the sideboard as well that you can tutor up with your Traverse the Ulvenwald, so it does potentially still have a bit more flexibility than what is available in the main deck, which is of course a good uh, sign for any mid-range strategy. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay, want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.